Biotech has historically been a volatile industry for investors. For every big win, there's a possible huge loss. But in the last few weeks, there's been a surge in biotech with fresh capital rushing in. Here to discuss, Skip Fleshman, partner at Asset Management Ventures. The firm is one of the longest running biotech venture capital firms in the United States. So uh, it seems like biotech is, is the hot thing right now. Is, is it getting frothy? Is this real? Well, I think uh, we're seeing a lot of interest from the biotech and the biotech markets because the, the pharmaceutical companies and biotech firms ha don't have a really strong R&D pipeline, and so they're becoming acquisitive. It also leads to uh, startups and, and early entrants um, with the ability to raise capital in the public markets. You were an investor in Amgen back in the day. Where do you see potential now? What are the hot technologies so, that you're excited uh, about? So just to, just to be clear, I wasn't the investor in 1980, but uh, our founding partner, Pitch Johnson, was. Your and, firm. Yes. Yeah. and, and uh, and so we're seeing some interesting opportunities in the digital health arena, so technologies applied into healthcare, and then other areas such as immuno-oncology and gene therapy. So is that curing cancer? Yeah, I think um, curing cancer is definitely the pipe dream. Uh, detecting cancer early is one, and also trying to have some therapeutics that can actually cure it. How has the competition and the landscape changed with more traditionally consumer tech venture capital firms getting into the biotech game, like Andreessen Horowitz, for example. Yeah, Andreessen Horowitz has done a very nice job in some of their investments. I think for many, it's, uh, it's tricky because the healthcare ecosystem is extremely complex, and if you haven't taken the time to really understand how it works, it can be very daunting, and I think people can make some mistakes early. Right. Vintage. Do they get it? It, it? You know, DFJ, for example, gave Theranos one of its early checks. Yes, I think um, many of them don't, to be honest. I think you, it's helpful to have a healthcare background, but also the flip side is true too. For healthcare firms, it's helpful to have the tech background as well, to understand AI, to understand data, uh, mobile. That's very useful. Has the Theranos explosion impacted your job at all? Is it, are you doing anything differently? I think for us, not really, because we focus on data. We want to see outcomes data. We want to see results. And uh, I think Theranos was not a very transparent company. Um, we want to see transparency from our founders. We want to see the clinical data. And they didn't have it. What kind of team do you have behind the scenes to make sure you're making the right decisions? Yeah. So uh, I have uh, one of my teammates as a PhD electrical engineer from Stanford, Rich Simone, and then another one who was a founder of a, a, a therapeutics company called CV Therapeutics. He's also a cardiologist by mm -hmm. training. So where do you see the, bio the, the volatility has been, you know, sort of an, an endemic part of investing in biotechnology? Is that going to continue? Yeah, I think it was volatile for a while, but mm -hmm. the last few years have been pretty hot, um, mm -hmm. and we're seeing a lot of pharmaceutical companies very interested in the two sectors I identified, like gene therapy and immuno-oncology are two really hot sectors. What's overhyped? Uh, well, <laughs> there's always a lot of over hype in, in, in general markets, but I mean, for me, I'm, I'm looking so early now yeah. and more in the digital intervention sector. Yeah. I think there's just a lot of frothiness, and we're seeing some companies that are getting a little bit too much capital too early. It's true in the tech sector as well. So what kinds of companies are you most excited about? Well, for me, um, I think what we can do in cancer is one area we just touched on. Cancer detection is one that's, that's fascinating. And I think everybody's been affected by cancer at some level. And if you can detect cancer early, you can really, really help outcomes improve significantly. And so we're looking at a company, actually we're invested with Andreessen and a company named Freno. And what Freenome does is they, they look at uh, a blood sample and they analyze specific parts of the blood to see what kind of response is not really intuitive. And they use a lot of AI on the background, in the background to actually look for patterns in the blood that can detect cancer at stage one. So are you looking at patients who might have cancer? Or are you looking at yeah, anyone? I mean, the first area they're going after is colorectal cancer. Mm. And so um, the idea is to do a very inexpensive blood draw as a preventative major and, a measure. And over That's time... That's something that everyone would do or only if well, you, I think you it's have be, an indication? I think it'll be based on things that the physicians already look at today. What is your family history, mm. age, etc.? So it'll be rolled out slowly, but we're hopeful that we can detect multi-cancers with one blood, one blood test. Mm -hmm. There's also been concern that the cancer field could be overhyped. The curing cancer. Yeah, I mean, curing cancer is a whole different ballgame, yeah. right? I think it's a really tricky place. Um, uh, there's a lot of hype around immuno-oncology. Mm -hmm. the, the great thing about it is it can be curative. The bad thing about it is sometimes it can be fatal because mm -hmm. once you trigger the immune system to turn on, it will fight the tumors, but it may also fight healthy organs mm -hmm. and, and, you know, liver, lung cancers, but also your heart or brain. What about, you talked about, you mentioned gene editing. You know, tell me a little bit more about where you see real potential there. Well, gene editing is a, is a pretty early sector, right? And so we've invested in a couple of companies. A dentist is one that's in the public markets. What do they do? 
Um, they actually target orphan diseases, so they have four or five different areas that they're going after that are very, orphan disease means a very small market, um, but they're actually curing certain types of, of genetic diseases that can be fatal for, for young children. Curing in babies that have yet to be born, or No, no, these are, these, are, these are for okay. typically for children that, um, or even adults that have, um, that have the disease itself. So what's going to be possible in 10 years that isn't today? If you're on, the, you're on the front edges of this. Yeah, I think what will be possible is detecting cancer early, treating it with some immuno-oncology. But I also think the chronic disease area is really interesting, too. And that's where we're seeing the digital world begin to intersect with healthcare. And we're taking these behavioral signals that we get. We're taking external uh, signals that we're getting, like contextual, what's happening in the weather. And we're able to influence people's chronic illness. It could be respiratory illness asthma, COPD, it could be diabetes, mm -hmm. um, it could be behavioral problems such as depression or opioid addiction. We, can, we think we can take the digital data that we have and improve people's lives long term. Do you think we need better regulation to make sure a Theranos doesn't happen again? Uh, for Theranos, I, 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 yeah, I mean, it's... Or companies making, in general, false promises. Yeah, I, I do. I, well, regulation, maybe not. I think the venture community is, is wising up to stuff like this. Um, I think it's in the tech sector as well. We're mm. seeing some of this. We're maybe a little bit of overhype uh, without the ability to deliver long term. All right, Skip Fleshman with Asset Management Ventures. Thank you so much Thank you. for stopping by.